guys, it's Miss Melanie with MRO, and I'm super excited today to be with you again for another Let's Go God's Story Adventure. Where in the world are we at today? If you'll pay attention, we are at the local library. I love this place. It is huge, and there are so many books in there. I love to come here and read. Sometimes I love to come and just pick up books. Um, as of today, we actually can't go inside because of everything with COVID. You can only pick up books. So instead of being inside the library with all of the books that we can gain wisdom and knowledge from, I am coming to you live right outside of the front door. I love the library and everything about it. I love that it's a quiet place, a place you can go away to and that you can just walk for days looking at all the books that they have there. Listen, but there's one book above all books that I want you to know about, and that is your Bible. Um, it is the book that I cherish above all things. And while I love the library and reading and borrowing books and all those things, with fiction books and nonfiction books, you know, there are books that tell just wonderful stories that help you enjoy uh, life and, and escape to wonderful places, exotic places like maybe Italy or, or some place in the Bahamas. Well, there are also nonfiction books that tell us the truth about things and we can learn from them and gain knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Listen, I love reading and I know that we read for many reasons, right? You go to school, you have to read. We need to learn, you know? Um, there are um, books that you have to read, there are tests that you have to take and you're able to read the instructions. So it's a very important part of our life for learning. You know, fiction is just sometimes for just enjoyment. So I want you to know that if there were only one book, only one book in the whole world that I would choose to have my Bible. Now, we're starting out the year because I want you to know that everything that I teach you this year is coming from this book. Nothing's added, nothing's taken away. Listen, the, what is the Bible? It is God's message written to man. Um, God was tr is true and he can be trusted and we can know that this is his word. You know what it teaches me? It teaches me how to live, how to please God. It also contains many books. Actually, there's 66 to be exact inside of here. There are two segments in this book, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Listen, and a testament is an agreement, a covenant that the people made with God. And he used these agreements and covenants to tell the story of how God's kingdom began and how the people lived, what they learned, the mistakes they made, and how they became could become more like the Father and eventually surrender their lives to Christ. It's just the best. You know, it was written 1,600 years ago. The Old Testament is the Old Covenant. The New Testament, the New Covenant. Listen, Timothy wrote it best in the Bible in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Let me read that to you. There's nothing like the written word of God for showing us the way to salvation, faith in Jesus Christ. Every part of scripture is God breathed and used one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, teaching us to live God's way. Through the word we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. That means this is the huge, most important thing you can do in your life, is to know that every word in here, God breathed in scripture. Well, I've got a little activity I want us to do together because I really want you to understand this concept of God breathing. It's not some mystical thing. It is a beautiful way exactly in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he breathed life into Adam. It's the same thing for us today. So I've got just a flat balloon, but I'm wondering what do I need to actually make this grow and be bigger and stronger to be used for the purpose that it was made? Yeah, it needs air, right? So,
compared to my Bible verse, it's a beautiful picture of God's love for us. God's breath, God breathed the words, important words for us to learn and to read. If I were with you, do you know what I would do right now? I would walk around the room and I would say to each one of you, God breathed these words for you. God made you. He breathed life into you. Now I want you to take a deep breath with me, okay? All right, now you need to breathe it out. Just like the balloon, scripture teaches us everything that has breath is living. Now Hebrews 4.12 teaches us a little bit about that. I don't want all those snarky little remarks I know you're making right now because my balloon deflating. Hebrews 4.12 says it this way, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharpened, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between the soul and the spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost heart. Listen, God breathed the words into godly men who wrote them down. And that, my friends, is the inspired word of God that we have today. Second Peter 2 1 says this, the prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. God says we're to cherish this, my friends. We are to hold it close to our hearts. All of our Let's Go God stories are straight from the Bible. Sometimes we call it God's Word. Sometimes we call it Scripture. Um, a lot of names for this, um, but all of our Let's Go stories are coming straight from the Bible. If you'll join me this season and the upcoming weekend for another fun adventure, I can't wait to see you. I can't see, wait to see where God is going to take us. And I can't wait to see how God is breathing life into you and for you to be making the difference by living out God's word in exactly the way he has made you. You are perfectly fashioned by him and there is no other. So until we see each other again, I want to hold together with you just for a moment in prayer for this day. Father God, we love you and we thank you for NASCAR and we thank you for this opportunity for our families to be back at the track as far as their dads and the working uh, elements of the um, teams go, God. I pray that everything will go and move swiftly and that all will be protected as they come and as they go. Uh, be with everyone whose families will be separated. Be with the moms to be leaders and the dads, leaders in their homes in the way that they should be. Lord, help them to walk in the ways that are honoring to you, Father. Help them as they're away from their families to cherish your word in their heart. Help them to know that the very breath of God is alive in them to do the work that they get to do and what they love, but also in their witness for Jesus Christ. And God, I pray for safety in every way that you can provide it. I pray that you will just be before, behind, and beside every little part of this day and evening. So God, we love you and we thank you again. We thank you for your story. We thank you that you allow us to be a part of your story. Help us to live this out in a way this year that we can grow and become more like you, Jesus, and that we will continue to tell the truth of your word and only speak the truth in all, for all of our days, God. And when we fail, to ask you for forgiveness and know that you have forgiven us and that you wipe it away. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope to see you very soon, praying for a wonderful, wonderful race in Daytona.